The minimum wage is the lowest wage at which employees can sell their labor. It is an important labor market institution which most countries all over the world have already introduced. The opinions on the minimum wage legislation are usually expressed by contradictory empirical results. One side is in favor of minimum wage, whereas the opposing view considers that minimum wage has several disadvantages for economies. This study discusses the core theoretical approaches on the relationship between the minimum wage and employment, which is reflected by the empirical results from the international literature. Moreover, it presents the findings of the most recent research and the results of meta-analyses of this issue. The main arguments in favor of minimum wage are as follows. It improves the living standard of the poorest and most vulnerable groups of society since it can raise family incomes at the bottom of the income distribution, thus lowering poverty. It enhances active demand by moving resources from higher to lower incomes, which are known to have a higher propensity to consume than the highest incomes. It increases incentives to take on jobs. It encourages the activation of the economically inactive population by becoming work enticing in terms of being able to secure a living. On the other hand, the opponents of minimum wage legislation suggest that minimum wage increases fail to stimulate growth and can have a negative impact on vulnerable workers during recessions. Minimum wage policies hinder firms which attempt to reduce wage costs during trade or economic downturns, consequently generating various business inefficiencies. Newmark suggests that a higher minimum wage may discourage firms from employing low-wage, low-skill workers that minimum wages are intended to help, and that targeted tax credits can do a better job of reaching the poor than minimum wages do. Until the early 1990s, the majority of empirical studies agreed that the minimum wage had a negative effect on employment, relying mainly on the neoclassical approach, according to which, the minimum wage causes unemployment. However, since 1992, when a top labor economics journal organized a special issue entitled New Minimum Wage Research, a symposium, new results have begun to emerge. In particular, David Card and Alan Kruger's studies overturned the old economic orthodoxy about the minimum wage, providing evidence that increases in minimum wages are not necessarily accompanied by decreases in the employment level. Card found that the increase in the minimum wage in California in 1988 did not lead to a decline in teenage employment or job losses in the retail trade. Card investigated the impact of the increase in the federal minimum wage in April 1990 on teenagers' employment and did not find evidence of unemployment effects. Card and Kruger compared the evolution of employment in the fast food industry of New Jersey, which raised its minimum wage in 1992, with the growth in employment of Pennsylvania, a neighboring state which did not raise it. They concluded that the employment effects of the minimum wage increase ranged from non-existent to marginally positive. David Newmark and William Washer were one of the greatest opponents of Card and Kruger's results and directly challenged their conclusions. In 2008, Newmark and Washer published their book entitled Minimum Wages, which analyzed over 300 studies on the minimum wage which had been conducted in various countries all over the world since the beginning of the 1990s. According to the authors, the majority of the studies had revealed the negative employment effect of minimum wages. This was the situation until 2009, when another Breaking Point publication was distributed on this issue. This was the article by Chris DeCuliegos and Tom D. Stanley who used data from 64 studies on the effects of the minimum wage on teenage employment in the USA and found that the empirical literature was contaminated by publication selection bias. Once this publication selection was corrected, the average impact was close to zero, and the average elasticity of the meta-analysis was found to be around minus 0.01. Since then, more voices began to appear in the foreground which argued that the increase in the minimum wage does not cause any negative impact on employment. Various theoretical approaches have been developed that either try to present the theoretical expectations of the relationship or explain the variation in the results. In summary, these theoretical approaches can be categorized as follows. A. The neoclassical approach. B. Monopsony models. C. The Keynesian approach. D. The efficiency wage theory. 
and E. Search and matching models. A. The neoclassical approach. Line S is labor supply and line D is labor demand. Establishing a minimum wage means that employers will hire less workers at that wage. Thus, the higher the minimum wage is set above the equilibrium price, the more unemployment it causes and, consequently, the greater the losses in employment. B. Monopsony models. In such a monopsonous situation, in the absence of a minimum wage, both the equilibrium wage and the number of employees would be lower than what would prevail in conditions of perfect competition. The monopsonist sets the wage at the point where the marginal cost of labor equals the marginal revenue product. At this wage, the level of workers employed is EMP is less than that in the case of the competitive level E asterisk. Therefore, in a monopsony labor market, there is underemployment. In that sense, if the government imposes a wage floor of W prime, the firm can hire up to E prime workers, which implies that the imposition of a minimum wage on a monopsonistic market can increase employment. C. The Keynesian approach. According to the Keynesian approach, the consequences of an increase in the level of minimum wage cannot a priori determine the direction of the impact on employment. As is the case with commodity prices, an increase in wages will increase the labor costs and is expected to cause an increase in product prices, while a decrease in wages is expected to result in a decrease in prices. International competition cannot affect this result in the short term, but only in the long term. In any case, there is no direct connection between the change in wages and the change in employment. The Keynesian approach assumes that the introduction of a minimum wage is expected to exert some upward pressure on the price of products, while its effect on employment is unspecified in advance. D. The Efficiency Wage Theory The main idea was initially addressed by Akerlof in 1982 who suggested that higher wages can lead to higher productivity and efficiency by workers a phenomenon which could possibly compensate for the higher labor costs that a minimum wage may cause. Rebitzer and Taylor also showed that the imposition of a minimum wage slightly above the level of equilibrium wage can raise the possible cost of dismissal for an employee in a way that the company can devote less resources to monitoring work effort and are required instead to devote this amount of money and resources to the recruitment of additional workers. In the efficiency wage model, an increase in the minimum wage above the point and level shaped by a competitive market leads to an increase in both wages and employment. E. Search and matching models. In these models, the increased minimum wage causes an increase in the hiring cost. However, this increased cost can be offset by the supply side as those who enter the labor force and search for a potential job do so more willingly and more intensely, resulting in better job matches and employment increases. It may be the case that workers may not be very well informed about the potential work possibilities they have, and that they chose jobs which they know to be available. As a consequence, a firm which offers increased wages, attracts new workers easier, while those firms which offer lower salaries lose their staff. In this way, a minimum wage can lead to an increase in the level of employment. In the new minimum wage area, contradictory empirical results have been generated. In table which follows, we attempt to present the most recent evidence in order to investigate the latest trends, the direction of the relationship and magnitude of the impact. Do you want to show your research progress to more scholars? Contribute an entry that will be linked to your paper on the Encyclopedia platform, providing an opportunity for over 35,000 scholars to access and explore your research. Have you ever tried to show your latest research in a vivid way? Encyclopedia SciPlayer provides a service with which you can transfer your research to a live video format. 
Do you want to publish a new paper? Encyclopedia has an international, peer-reviewed, and open-access journal. Do you require a discount when you publish research in journals? Anyone who contributes to Encyclopedia can obtain vouchers for MDPI journal's article processing charges. Encyclopedia aims to create an open-access knowledge-sharing platform for all scholars. To find more information, search for encyclopedia.pub.